as we promised, we have got Gail Mahulet uh, in our commentary box. So welcome, Gail. Thank you. It's first of all, it's an honor to have you. Uh, you have been a fantastic player for Netherlands. You're number one seeded as well as number one ranked currently in the Netherlands. Um, how was your match today? Uh, I think it was uh, nice. Yeah. I started this morning or at 12 o'clock um, with an okay match. Yeah. I got a chance to get a feel in the hall and uh, the court. Um, and then the second match finished just now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was uh, also quite a good match. Okay. I felt good on court. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and both the games we saw were, were quite easy for you. It was, uh, I think, both both games ended like 20 on 9, 20 on 9. Uh, so, that, were, does that kind of help you to recover in time for tomorrow? Or as a top athlete, how do, how do you manage um, time crunch? I think, uh, yeah, of course, it, it helps that the, the match went like this. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, it's never easy, easy, because yeah. you always have to work hard and uh, have your focus on. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm happy that I uh, played two sets yeah. in, in this match <laughs> and in the first match as well. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, we, we saw that you uh, uh, recently participated in the Scottish Open and <laughs> also in the uh, Swedish Open. Uh, how were those experiences? Uh, was quite nice, mm -hmm. especially Scottish. Mm -hmm. I reached quarterfinals, and uh, yeah, it was it was a good tournament for me. Okay, felt good on court. Uh, played some uh, good players. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the the winner of the tournament. Okay, so good. that one was yeah, quite yeah. Yeah, yeah. That one that one was quite difficult, but still had a quite a good feeling afterwards. Right. Uh, Swedish, yeah, it was a close call. <laughs> uh, I lost in the third set uh, um, with 22-20. Yeah. Even though I was leading, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Part of the game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, how, in terms of your training regime, or how, uh, how do you, as a top athlete, mm. uh, how do you keep yourself fit during the off season, particularly, and and how do you recover well in the ongoing season? Um, off season, I still try to uh, keep moving. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to like completely do nothing. Right. That's also not really in me, I guess. Yeah. If if I have uh, nothing to do, then yeah. I'm not feeling myself. But of course, like you need to have a period of rest and yeah. do nothing. But then I feel like okay, I need to move again. Right. So uh, yeah. Um, then I'm just trying to practice sometimes, yeah. mm -hmm. but still take my rest. Right. Um, during uh, when I'm traveling and playing all these tournaments, I try to rest uh, as much as possible during the uh, or in between the practices right. uh, and afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, and also in the weekends, a lot of the times I have tournaments or league matches, right. um, or I even have to coach mm -hmm. uh, children. But when I'm off, mm -hmm. then I really try to uh, take it easy yeah. and uh, recover, not only physically, but also like mentally, mentally. and emotionally. Right. Uh, I think that's a, quite a important thing to Absolutely. do, because if you continuously go on, go on, go on, right. and don't take your rest, it can yeah, bite you in the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the butt later. <laughs> yeah. No, no that's, that's, uh, so what is your mechanism? To detach from badminton because uh, we were asking the same question uh, badminton is such a addictive sport once you start thinking of it it always rules over your brain mm -hmm. so uh, in the weekends how do you say okay i just want to think do something else yeah so uh maybe you know i live in De denmark yeah um i live in a small city mm -hmm. so i like to go to the town sometimes mm -hmm. yeah um it's not a big town yeah but if you really need rest then it's also nice to have a little bit quiet and ease uh, so i like to go to the town just sit at the bakery work on some stuff yeah. um uh, i like to be creative mm -hmm. Mm, so I like to create some art or oh, really? um, wow. yeah, or some content creation. Okay. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, really? but I haven't been posting that much lately. Okay. I hope I can at some point <laughs> pick that up a little bit uh, again if I have time. What, so what's the handle of your YouTube channel? Sorry. What's the handle? What's the, the handle? Yeah. Oh, this is just my name. Oh, uh, just your name. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So I post mostly about badminton and um, some other things as well. Yeah. But yeah, I've been so busy lately, and um, yeah, I haven't got the time to really uh, make something out of it. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's that's it. Um, in in terms of uh, you may, you said something about um, uh, mental support or just making sure that you are mentally in a good space. Mm -hmm. uh, how important is it for a top athlete? To, to ma ma ensure that there is a nice balance between your profession as a as badminton and the downtime which will give you that mental 
peace maybe yeah uh, it is important to pay attention to that uh, for me myself I uh, like to uh, pray a lot mm-hmm. uh, especially you know when things get tough right uh, that that is for me something that helps me mm-hmm. uh, keep going mm-hmm. uh, of course uh, support from my family mm-hmm. talking uh, uh, through FaceTime since yeah. I don't see them that often because yeah. I live abroad mm-hmm. uh, those things really get me through okay yeah okay and then you uh, we saw that you play for two different clubs uh, one in Denmark and I think uh, I saw that you also represented Colette I should work on my French. <laughs> yeah, Cholet. Yeah, uh, Cholet. Okay, so uh, do you play concurrently or in parallel for both the clubs or how does it work for you? Uh, yeah, at the same time, okay. I'm, I'm lucky that most of the matches are uh, not on the same weekends. Mm, right. Sometimes it can happen, but usually mm. it's spread out. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just travel from here to there and then back again. <laughs> and it's a, it's a lot of traveling, yeah. especially when I play in France, because... Right. Uh, so I have to go uh, to Copenhagen, from yeah. uh, to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Nantes, yeah. and from there to my club. Wow! So it's quite like uh, a lot of traveling, sure, but probably. yeah, <laughs> it is part of it. Oh, and no. uh, as long as I can play my matches there, and uh, I have really nice uh, and fun teams, yeah, I feel really welcome there, and uh, it's always nice to uh, yeah, yeah play the league matches. Yeah. Uh, what difference do you see while playing in Denmark, for example, which is often tagged as powerhouse of European badminton, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of the other countries, including Netherlands, uh, do you see any major differences which helps them produce the talent? Mm, I think, uh, yeah, sometimes the way uh, they uh, give training mm-hmm. and coaching, yep. uh, that is one thing. I think uh, the facilities are also quite good. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, the badminton halls in Denmark are only badminton courts. Yeah. And in the Netherlands, you have, you know, Marcus everything Marcus there. Marcus. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of good players and the level is already quite high. Yeah. So it brings the rest of the people also up. Up, yeah. And if you look at the league, um, there are a lot of foreign players mm. there. Okay. So, yeah, the level is just different, okay. I guess. Okay. So, basically, clubs in Denmark actually import players to come and play in the league. Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. For sure, yeah. yeah. Like, for example, in Denmark, I play also with uh, Joram mm-hmm. in the same team. Yeah. Um, and in France, we have... Well, me, Dutch, um, Slovenia, okay. Spain... Mm-hmm. France, uh, Belgium. Okay. So it's a it's a big mix. Um, yeah. Yeah, of good players <laughs> together, and then yeah. Yeah, yeah. What kind of music do you like to listen to, Kale? Uh, <laughs> a lot of different kinds. Um, I like R and B music. Ah, cool. I like soul music, funk, um, gospel music. Okay. I like country music. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're totally into world music. What are a lot of different <laughs> stuff? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Very nice, very nice. Well, uh, Gail, we of course know that you had a long day, so uh, I'm sure you would be maybe hungry or just want to relax yes, a bit I'm now. Hungry, yeah. But I just want to thank you for coming over in the commentary box hey, speaking up with, a few minutes with us and yeah sure also sharing your personal story with our viewers on youtube uh, yeah. i'm sure they would have learned a lot and you are a great example for young kids who are also trying to pursue badminton as a serious sport mm. right so yeah thank you so much for doing all the hard work yeah. <laughs> thank you too <laughs> all right you take care and have a good evening all yes. the best for tomorrow thank you all right <laughs>